This is the highest resolution brain model ever recorded. And if you give me six minutes, I'll explain why this is one of the most incredible things in the history of science. This cubic segment of human brain measures one millimeter in length, height, and width, and it contains 57,000 neurons, over 150 million synapses. It required a staggering 1.4 petabytes of data. This is equal to a thousand terabytes or a million gigabytes. This approach of trying to map all of the connections in the brain is called connectomics. Comics. As awesome as this technique is, the human brain has 86 billion neurons. If you slice that up, you will get one exabyte of data, which is 1,000 petabytes or a million terabytes. Using connectomics to model the full human brain with today's technology is just impossible, so the strategy in this field has been to model smaller organisms. In 1992, all 302 neurons of the C. elegans worm were successfully mapped. It took a gargantuan 10 years of effort. They did this by by painstakingly slicing up different segments of the worm and then taking the most high resolution photos possible with an electron microscope. They then printed out each of these micrographs and I shit you not had to sketch out every single one until all 302 were mapped out into one continuous picture. Next time you complain about having to do your taxes, imagine sketching worm brain for 10 years. This was an incredible accomplishment in science but a lot of people didn't see it this way. It took 10 years to model a worm with just 302 neurons. So the field of connectomics sort of grounded to a halt. It took 20 years of technological advancement until someone dared step into this field again. The brain of the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, was our next target, and it was a lot more ambitious than you might think. The fruit fly has an advanced memory and learning system and boasts over 100,000 neurons. This is a huge step up from the 302 neurons in the C. elegans. But this time they had Google's help, and convolutional neural networks were able to do all of the heavy lifting that was previously sketched out by hand. Even so, this gargantuan effort was still only completed in 2023. We have learned and continue to learn a crazy amount from this model of Drosophila melanogaster. One example of this, which might seem like an obvious point now, but was not obvious to start, is that the structure of these neurons, the shape and how they link up, really seems to inform their function. This means we can learn a lot about their function from simply looking at their structures and how they're all connected and wired up together. Another clinical example of this is that we now use the fruit fly as a model for neurodegenerative disease, like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's, all the way to the genetic mechanisms that regulate our sleep. There is a surprising amount of overlap between the genetic makeup of the fruit fly and our own brains. Evolution has conserved a lot of the most important parts. So the human brain segment that was modeled on May 10th, 2024 is a massive leap forward in the field of connectomics. But have we learned anything from it? Yes, yes, we really have. The team found a previously undiscovered class of directionally oriented neurons in the deeper layers of the brain. What does that mean? Neurons that are directionally oriented are typically involved in orientation and spatial navigation. An example of this can be found in the hippocampus, where a particular type of neuron called grid cells and place cells play a crucial role in spatial memory and navigation as they only fire when you're located in specific points in your environment. But these new classes of neurons lie even deeper in the brain, and we don't know what they do. While we can hypothesize they're also related to navigation and spatial orientation, them lying deeper in the cortex means they might be also related to sensory processing or consciousness. Another possibly groundbreaking discovery is this new axonal configuration, which is kind of in a world. We've just never seen anything like this before. But as we've seen, structure always informs function. So when we find a new structure in the brain, it's incredibly exciting discovery. We're yet to find what its function is yet though. Other interesting examples within this sample is that there was a two to one ratio of neurons to non-neurons. Wait, sorry, that's actually mixed up. It's a two to one ratio of non-neurons to neurons. Yeah, this was a really big surprise, although more and more evidence of this has been emerging in recent years. Neurons have always been the number one celebrity in neuroscience, obviously given its name, but other non-neuron brain cells called glia have been getting a lot of attention recently as our technological advancements have allowed us to study them better. We may have fallen victim to studying neurons mostly because our equipment was able to detect them, but I think in the next 10 years we will learn a lot more about the importance of these glial cells and might even see neurons neurons dethroned as the most important cell type in the brain. I mean, if they're outnumbered two to one, that's got to mean something that we don't know yet. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out my other one on the history and future of brain machine interfaces and what the hell Elon Musk is doing over at Neuralink. Subscribe for more impactful neuroscience and thank you so much for watching.